Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com and Fidget E. Vinny is trying to figure a way to get comfortable because I'm sitting on a different side of the settee I'm sitting on the left side instead of the right side and he's used <laughs> he's confused are you confused he's used to sitting on the left side of me either resting on the leg rest or cuddling up to me where my I guess where my stomach where I'm sitting you know, like that part of the chair which I think is where he's going to aim for now or maybe on the armrest. He doesn't know what to do. Do you? You don't know what to do. So, uh, oh yeah, this is Let Me Boy to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. And I've decided to go back to the old days when I used to do these <sighs> recordings sitting comfortably which I haven't done for a long time. I used to have an old black chair. Well, it wasn't old when I started, but it became older, as have I. And it started to wear out, and it was squeaky. And that was what I used to sit in when I did my recordings. But the last few years, I've been sitting up at a desk it's still a comfortable chair, but it's not, like, relaxing, comfortable. This is this is where I sit. Well, I normally I sit the other side. But that is where I sit when I'm, like, reading or meditating or listening to music or listening to an audio book or watching a movie or television or whatever. So... I can actually rest my head back oh. and very likely fall asleep. So hopefully I won't fall asleep. But this is much more comfortable for me. I had it, I've changed the setup mildly in this room. Because I had it all set up so that I could I'll move the microphone a little bit. That's better. I had it all set up so that I could video myself for YouTube, but it's come to my notification via my brain that I don't want to do that. I don't want to film myself. These recordings are about talking, they're about, it's about the audio really, it's, it's not about looking at my face. And I don't want to look at my face when I'm doing a recording. It puts me off, distracts me, and I feel I feel very self-conscious. But when I do the audio, there's no self-consciousness at all. I'm just me. And yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but oh, he's he's off. So I've moved the chair that I had that I was sitting in for to make the videos. It's only been like, what, blimey, a week? Just over a week that I've had that set up. And I put the chair, his chair back, because that was his chair that he slept in sometimes, and also he liked to climb onto it to get to the windowsill in the bedroom. So now I've cleaned, I've cleared off the windowsill again put the chair back in that room, into the bedroom, so he can get onto the windowsill, and it's brightened him up. He was, he jumped on there, and he was having a good look around, and he laid down in, in the sun, and it just gives him, it's an extra place, it's an extra thing for him to do. So he likes being on the windowsill, because he loves to watch the world, Loves to watch the birds, the cats. He can see into probably a, a few windows from there, from his eyesight. I say that like I don't know what windows I can see into from my bedroom, 
but I genuinely don't look into people's windows. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. But he can see over the fence and there's another dog over the fence and he watches that dog. Um, and there's no neck curtains, so I, I can't, you know, he can, everyone can see him. Well, he's very little, but I imagine they can see him and he can see clearly through it. I mean, I, when I had neck curtains, I used to pull the neck curtains up so he could, like, look through there. Blimey. Which just goes to show how long ago, how long he's been doing that for. Because I took them neck curtains down at the end of November. Yeah, when, when my friend passed away, I had a... Mm, I couldn't do anything that night. I just couldn't do anything. So all I did is clean. So I thought his dad was going to be staying here for a couple of days. So I cleaned the flat, scrubbed the windows, uh, you know, ironed the plates, just everything. Just did the whole lot. Uh, he didn't, his dad didn't end up coming here. But, yeah, so I nick, so I took the neck curtains down because they were filthy. But they also ripped, so I got rid of them. I have not replaced them. So the whole of this year, so far, I haven't had to be neck curtains. So every time I get dressed, or undressed, I have to try and remember to close the curtains. I'm not always successful in that. Usually I am. The police have visited just to let me know, to rem to remind me. But yeah, generally it's fine. So, did I say only listen when you can safely close your eyes? Uh, if I haven't, then I'm now I have. So this, 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 this is... What is a day? What is a day? What is a day? What is a day? I think the day might be... Q&A Friday. <laughs> that was rubbish. Uh, CS, Q&A Friday. Hello. Um, my website's coming along quite nicely. I've now got... If you go to the website, I, I need to update the latest recordings on there, but the actual uh, playlists you can go on to yeah that, that's on the first page and you can click on them and download most of those recordings and you, you can download all four versions of the recordings all at once and I think the bedtime story times are on there the sleepy boring objects are on there uh, what other ones um, relax and sleep hypnosis D please on there ASMR let me boy the sleeper on there I'm in the process of uploading the let me boy you to sleep podcasts so I've got up to 410 listed and with the let me boy to sleep for the first thousand it's just just one recording without music but then once i get to about a thousand then it turns into like four because i lost lots of recordings and i've, I've not replaced them so i'm in the process of working backwards because i uploaded i created f what 410 items for that playlist and now I'm uploading the recordings onto the play onto each one so it's going to take a little while because you know well it just will and then but at the moment you could click on there and you can download number 410 down to about 370 at the moment and I just I'm working my way down to one if that makes sense although it isn't one it's probably about 100 so uh, it's what I'm doing. I'm just doing it until I get to the get to the to the recording that's already been done. 
This makes sense to me. It does. I kind of know what I mean, but unable to articulate it. So yeah, so that that will be done, and then from then on, I'll I'll build up to the whatever amount we've we've got now, one thousand one hundred and whatever it is. Yeah, so that's good. So that'll be that'll all be done by the end of next week. The good thing about that stuff is I don't have to be in the mood to do it. I can just do it. It's admin. It's I don't need to be in a good mood. I don't need to be enthusiastic or anything. Really, just I just you know it's an ongoing process of just uploading next page upload next page upload and just it's just the, the, you know the website build is open all the time so from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed I'm just uploading whenever I remember so whenever I'm at the desk I'm uploading continuously while I'm doing other stuff as well you know like creating new videos for YouTube for the uh, podcast episodes so I will be uploading this recording as a YouTube video. So, but it just won't be my face. It'd be, you know, like an animation, a graphic or something like that. So that's it really. Therefore, you will be able to listen if you want to on YouTube. But most of my recordings are now on YouTube. The I'm still in the process of doing the Let Me Boy to Sleep ones, updating them. Uh, I think I've got 40, one to 40s uploaded now, like available. But I've done, I don't know, about 110 I've uploaded that I've not made available yet. So it's, it's a continuous thing. That's, that will take me till Christmas probably before that's all done. But I'll upload 10 a day. That way I'm not bombarding people with too much stuff. <sighs> yeah, that was it. I might actually get myself... It feels weird sitting on the left side. Because I'm so used to being on the right side. Weirdly enough, this supports my left side more than the right side does that supports my right side more and there's my um my lower back left side is the the bit that i have a bit of a problem with it seems to be quite a bit more supportive so but i prefer the <laughs> i prefer sitting on the right side isn't it weird Maybe I'll alternate, or maybe I just make more recordings. That way, I'll have an excuse to sit on the left side. Yeah. So some of you might be thinking, "Are you going to get on with it?" Um, no. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. All I get is bills. Why do they keep sending me stuff? Honestly, like the catalog. Don't forget your arranged payments due by the 19th of August. If you've already paid this, please ignore this message. And now the mobile company. Your bill's now ready. Uh, total's due £52.14. Right, okay, thanks. Yesterday, what did I have? Uh, the, the gas and electric. Pay your balance to avoid a late payment fee. Just give me a break. me. I don't even get behind. I'm never, well, as far as not paying it, but I do still pay, you know, I pay the amount I'm supposed to pay. Okay, right. So what have I got? Uh, I hope everyone's well. It's... I'm thinking of doing something a little bit different next week. I don't know if you've got any suggestions. Because next week is my birthday week. 
I'm not saying that like, let's celebrate for the whole week. That's how important I am. No, I just mean, like my birthday's, it's, it's the 19th on Monday. My birthday's the following Monday. Which means I um, have the, yes, yeah, so a 54th birthday. So I'm figuring the week leading up. So from next week all the way up to the weekend leading up to my birthday, I was wondering, which is the bank holiday weekend? What could I do? Something a little bit different, like still a podcast, still doing this, but what do you think would be, is there anything that you'd find mildly interesting that I could do? Something a little bit different maybe. Or maybe something that I've done before that you liked. Uh, if there is anything that I've done before that you liked. <laughs> if you can think of anything. So I, I, I'm, I'm think I'm yeah, I'm, I'm pondering what I have thought about which is like separate from that is maybe doing a weekly trivia day. So I've got Friday, you know, Q and A Friday. So I'm thinking maybe trivia Tuesday. It doesn't have to rhyme, you know, but trivia Tuesday. Q&A Friday. I mean, Q&A Friday doesn't rhyme, does it? Q&A Tuesday would be the same. Q&A Monday. But Trivia Tuesday or Trivia Thursday. I think Trivia Tuesday because a T. Trivia Tuesday. Because Thursday is like... It's not T. I don't know why I'm telling you that. You probably figured that one out. So I'm thinking of doing that and then just going through... I've got a few books, trivia books and stuff, so maybe going through them and commenting, maybe. But for today, I have somewhere, where is it? Facebook. I've got my phone here, I'm sure I look at it. Facebook, where are you? Jason's, Jason Newland's Boring Group. So we've got 179 members. I know there's more people on there actually visiting the page because I invited hundreds of people but those I invited who didn't even come up on the list of members so I don't know quite how that worked out but if if you if you're not a member of the group and you'd like to participate in some of these well contribute to the podcasts then Please feel free to join. Okay, so any questions for tomorrow's Q&A Friday? I posted yesterday. So let's have a look. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to Kara. Kara, Kara, Kara. Uh, just, just to say thank you for your kind words. Very appreciative. Thank you. It's very nice. And also, uh, also thank you to Brittany as well. So just, a, you know, thank you to everyone, but particularly for this podcast, just thank you to those two people. And of course, thank you to Molly the Boss for being the uh, the admin estrator for this group. So here we go. So I've got three questions. So it's not going to be a... Well, it's not necessarily going to be a short recording, but it's not probably going to be a huge, huge, long recording because there's only three questions. Yes, yeah, so I've got Tina, Diana and Christine with questions. 53 people have seen the any questions for tomorrow's Q&A Friday. So only three out of the 53 people actually posted questions. That might be because the other 50 people have already posted questions because I've been doing this for about four months now. 
last week I did a special one. It was uh, questions from Vinny. Uh, maybe uh, next week I might I might do one uh, questions from my invisible friend. So I'll just do first first. I guess first one says Tina was first. Yeah, so if you could be an animal in the world discounting humans what would you choose to be and why hmm what I think hmm well I don't want to be a dog can you hear I'm going to leave that barking in just so you hear what it's like. This is I've I bought this on myself because I put the windowsill. I'm not I'm not I've not put the windowsill up. See, it's, it's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Don't worry. I will edit out any future barking so you can relax. I just thought I'd let you hear it. What I have to put up with. I mean, I, I love him to bits. But he, I mean, he's, he's not even being aggressive, really, I don't think. He's just so excited. If I went in there, he's probably wiggling his... Right, I'm going to do my big thing. Right, he's coming in now. As soon as I do this, so he stopped. So this is my little alarm. So it's a high pitch alarm. I hope it didn't affect you. I'll listen back to this bit, don't worry. Just to make sure that I haven't um, ruined everyone's hearing. Good boy. Yes, you are. You're protecting us. You're protecting us, aren't you? You're a good girl. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. You know what, I was thinking, because he, he annoyed me the other day and I was getting really wound up by him. But then it all, it just reminded me of Andre. Because I remember when I lost Andre, I felt so guilty for getting angry at him sometimes. Because he would, it's all right, me cuddles, like he won't settle down. A couple of times Andre was scratching at the front door like two o'clock in the morning because he wanted to get out to meet a girl I think his girlfriend would lived in the field and he wouldn't take no for an answer and I was so Vinny that's enough now done and he was a he has to have the last word can you hear that always has to have the last word that's it Vinny I have the last word no more good he's listened so Andre was scratching at the door but because it's quite an echoey, very echoey outside, so you could hear it. I I know that. I don't know if people. Vinny, I said I have the last word. Stop it, please. Stop it. I have the last word. He. Apparently, he. So, I was concerned that he was going to wake up. The other residents. Now that that time in the morning, hearing scratching, it was very loud as well. So I did get really, it really wound me up because I kept picking him up and bringing him in, going back to bed, and then I have to get up again, pick him up and say, oh. And I, and I felt guilty for getting angry at him. And when he when he passed away, I was like, oh, I felt even more guilty. Like why? But it like happened a couple of times. I got angry with him because he was being naughty. Another time, I think he stole my pizza. Which is funny for some people, but it's, it wasn't funny for me. I've actually got a video of it somewhere. Well, someone took a video and found it hilarious. Or a picture or something. I mean, yeah. It's, I'm sure they got some kind of connection, him and Andre, Vinny and Andre. Because Vinny used to steal my pizza. No, Andre used to steal my pizza. 
the first weekend I had Vinny, he actually sat on my pizza. So I had a, it was just a, like a frozen one. Well, it's cooked, but, you know, so it's a cheap free, freezer one. If that had been a Domino's, I would have got rid of him. I, I, would, I don't think I'd have kept him after that weekend. So I had no connection with him. I'd only had him a day. I think that would have been like, out. You mess with my Domino's, that's got you gone. But he had, uh, he had, all I did is I had the plate on my, on my lap. I was that side of the set. He says, the whole of this side is, is completely empty for him. He was standing up. So what I did is I broke a bit of the pizza off. And I put it to the left for him to, to have. And instead of moving to the other side of the thing, he sat down on my pizza. Like proper sat on it. And... It took me ages to rinse that thing off. Now that's grim. Oh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> oh dear. That's another person I've lost. Um, I was just a joke. Don't. don't it didn't really happen. It's what well, it did happen, but I mean, the I had half of the pit. He didn't sit on the whole thing. Yeah, he didn't sit. On, it was only half of it he sat on. Should we move on? Let's move on. So. Um, any any future barking I will edit that out I just wanted you to hear it hear what I and that was in the bedroom that was how loud it was in a different room and we had a, a flat inspection in this building last week was it this no it's last Tuesday or something not this Tuesday the Tuesday before and he, he, um, I was really concerned that he, he was going to be barking because this bloke was knocking. He knocked on at least two other doors before mine and went into their flats. He didn't hear them. Thankfully, he didn't hear them. And both of these people told me, they texted me to, to let me know. One phoned me, one texted me to let me know that they'd been. The bloke had been and he was on the way up to me. And I couldn't believe it. He, he barked at the door when the bloke knocked on the door. Because I literally answered the phone and then it was bang, bang, knock, knock, knock. And Vinny went nutty. But he didn't do it when other people, when, when he was knocking on other people's doors, he didn't do it. And I was so glad about that because, you know, it doesn't look good if he's barking every time someone moves. He's getting better though. If there's a distraction, if there's music or the TV's on or I'm listening to an audio book, quite often that will distract him from other stuff. When it's completely silent like now and he can hear people in the garden and he can hear the birds and he can hear cars and he can hear people coming and going into the in, into the building and into their own front doors and maybe someone knocking at the door and stuff like that. That's the stuff that he, he notices and sometimes reacts to. So, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I'll edit out any future barking from this recording, so don't worry, you're not going to have that again. I always edit it out, but for this, I just thought I'd, It'd be nice for you to hear it. Maybe not nice, but it's quite early on into the recording. It's like five minutes or six minutes in. So if you have fallen asleep straight away, I apologize. Maybe I should just edit it out. Or maybe I should put in brackets barking at three minutes or something. <laughs> just just as a warning. Warning may contain barking. So, what animal? What is the question again? If you could be, Tina, if you could be any animal in the world, discounting humans, what would you choose to be and why? Well, well, well. 
Actually, I've got a food delivery coming, so he'll be barking in a minute. They should be here within about next 20 minutes, half an hour. Just some milk and some eggs. <sighs> Good boy. Ah, you know, just as I mentioned that I'm get a delivery coming, the door goes downstairs and he starts barking. Ah. <sighs> Now, I might try and edit out the barking. Hopefully. <laughs> or I might leave... No, I better not leave it in, because I did promise I wouldn't. So, he's now got a... a bone. That came with the delivery. It's just a few things. I'll tell you what I got. I like to share all my interests and stuff with you, don't I? Right. What did I get? Let's have a look. Go away. Yeah. Past items. Past orders. Supermarket. So I got Buxton Still Natural Mineral Water. 8 times 500 milliliters. So that's just one pack of them. Baker's Sizzler's Dog Treats. 90 grams. So I've got one pack of them. This is what he's got now. Is the Good Boy Paws Lee and co chicken filled dog bone um one of them so he's got that now saying it's like he knew that the man had them that had his treats that's why he gets so excited i think i've got sainsbury's hummus be good to yourself 200 grams one of them sainsbury's british semi skimmed milk four pints or 2.27 liters so I've got two of them i've got um house 24 7 i don't know what that means sponge scour times by six one pack of them they're just little scours you know the ones that you do your washing up with sponge on one side and a scour on the other cheap very 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 cheap cheap uh, I've got Nestle Shredded Wheat Bite Size Cereal, 720 grams, one box of them. Uh, Sainsbury's Woodland Free Range Medium Mix, uh, six. I've got one pack of them, or one crate. I don't know. Is it crate? Casket? What are they called? Egg box. Box, I suppose. Box. And I've got Callow Organic Lightly Salted Rice Cakes, 130 grams, one pack of them. And I've got, lastly, Alpen Muesli, no added sugar, 550 grams, one count. £29.57. Where's the pizza? There's no pizza. I kept trying to get a pizza, but they didn't. Apparently they were all out of pizzas. I reckon maybe the freezer department has gone. Like broke down or something. Ah. Uh, because the pizza I wanted. It's just a standard pizza that I get. Every now and then. And it's like. It's a cheap. You, uh, Sainsbury pizza. But it's alright. I quite like it. So they said. Oh it's not available. So I said try a different one. Not available. Try a different one. So I try a different one. Not available. And it's almost like they were trying to push me to spend £5 on a pizza. Which I'm not. <laughs> I'm really not. No, I'm not. I don't... £1.99 is pretty much the most I'll go for a pizza these days. So it's delivered by Saeed. So I gave him... I didn't have... They have a tip thing on here. Because I've used Uber Eats. And the tip... You have to pay for delivery. So... View receipt. So let's have a look. What's the receipt? It's £24.25 for the food. £2.79 for delivery. What? They charged me £2.43 service fee. I didn't realise that. And I wonder it's so expensive. Bag was 10 pence. And they wanted me to give them a, um, to put on a, what's it, a 
tip of 10%, so I'd like, no, and I gave him a pound. That's all the money I had, all the cash I had. But it's still it's still better to give him nothing than something than nothing. Although some people would say, well, a pound's nothing, but I don't. And I didn't open the door properly. I, I kept it on the on the chain because, you know, because I've got a, a vicious dog just to make sure he, <laughs> he keep him safe from Vinny. Wow, I didn't realise a service fee. So I'm paying two, f over five pound for, to get it delivered, basically. But, the Sainsbury's is absolutely miles away. Long way away from here. Um, so yeah, I get deliveries 16th of August. The last one was the 7th of August. One before that was the 18th of July. One before that was 19th of June, 11th of June, 25th of April. 22nd of April, 19th of April, 15th of April, 18th of March. Oh, I've got stuff from Iceland. I forgot Iceland. Oh, I like Iceland. Why didn't I get more stuff from Iceland? I have to go back to that. Uh, wow. I got a Toby Carvery in June. It wasn't this June. But well, that was the June before. Because that, that's, I would like June 2023. June 2022. That's the last time I I bought a carvery. It was the 5th of June 2022. Over two years ago. Blimey, Bird Box, what on earth is that? Bird Box, store is no longer available. Wow, I don't know what that was. I used to get a carvery, and it basically, it's, it's pretty good. It was, the, it was like a f big proper lunch, like full, usually on a Sunday, I think. But it was a proper full-on roast dinner, and there's always enough for both of us. So I'd 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 take what I needed off my plate. So and I don't eat much anyway. I don't have a big, but I still managed to have a fairly big plate because I halved it, half the food, and I gave him half. And the benefit, I'm a gave him that, but also he got all the packaging, so that was good. So <laughs> I just had a, a plate to clean. He, he had a plate to clean and to chuck away all this, all the, the tubs that the stuff was in. Ooh, see. Uh, okay, so where are we going? Back to what I was talking about. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go, go. Um, right, so what is it? Oh, all comments. How many comments have I got? Three. If you could be any animal, in, I'll get around to it in a minute. Any animal in the world, discounting humans, what would you choose to be and why? Okay, I'll try and stick to the subject like I normally do. Yes. I think I would... I've kind of thought about this in the past. I'd quite like to be an animal that doesn't have a predator. So thinking, I mean, technically, crocodiles, I mean, even those animals that don't have predators, they can still... Uh, you know, sort of sometimes still attack each other, don't they? So I'm trying to think who's at the, the top of the food castle. It'd be things like the lions, the elephants, rhinosaurus, um, I'm trying to think the 
crocodiles, alligators, whales, sharks. I mean, sharks, I think, are pretty... They might attack each other, but they generally haven't really... I mean, I suppose fishermen. Uh, but a whale... Don't really have... Yeah, don't really have a prey, do they, apart from humans? Uh, so, I know, I'm, I know I'm being very practical, but just... Then I think, what lives the longest? So, is it like a sea turtle? They can live for a couple of hundred years, can't they? I think. I don't know how long crocodiles live for. A long time as well. Millions of years, I think. Well, not a goldfish anyway. I wouldn't want to be a goldfish. Um... I wouldn't want to live in a zoo. Or in a swimming pool, you know, like in SeaWorld. So to, to it's just a whale to put it in. It's, yeah, it's, that's just, I understand it. They're popular places, I think, SeaWorld and seeing it's the only time. It's it's weird. It's a weird thing, isn't it? That you get a chance to see a whale. And maybe the only time you'll ever get a chance to do that is if you go to a place where there's... I guess that makes sense. You have to go somewhere where the whale is. And unless you go out into the ocean, whale spotting, which is, I suppose, a bit like train spotting... You definitely need an anorak, don't you? Because of the rain and the wind and all the water. Especially if the the whale splashes on you. Or wheeze. But... See, I, I like zoos. But I kind of don't at the same time. Because some, you know, animals... There's animals that are being protected. And they're, they're very rare. And actually, yeah, they're, they're not... They're not living a free life like they would do in the wild, but they might not be free for very long if they were in the wild. So the fact that they're being looked after in a big envi you know, big caged environment, it might, I don't know. I don't know what it's like to be a leopard or a lion. Maybe a lion, but then I'm thinking, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'd want a tail, to be honest with you. I don't know. How, would it be annoying? Vinny, is it annoying to have a tail? His tail's up. He, he's erect the whole time, Vinny is. Honestly, his tail's standing erect nearly most of the time. Most of the time. He's a very proud young man. Is, uh, I've seen a couple of dogs like that. I think huskies are like that as well. I know huskies had their tails erect. And I've seen a couple of dogs that are similar. It's not the same type. It's, they're not Jack Russells, but they've got probably got something of him in them, or he's got something of him in them, um, because of the, they've got sort of similar kind of features. I suppose being a dog would be good. If you have the right person, if you the right um, family and you know someone that loves you, if I suppose if, yeah to be a dog or a cat even, if you're loved, like really loved, you know, and just can just kind of do what you want. I think probably being a dog on a farm. But like a family farm, you know, not not so much like animals being whatever, but but like with 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 room, with with ground, with maybe with other dogs and running around, and uh, I imagine that's a lot of fun for a dog to have a have a big amount of space to be able to do what they want. He, Finny, would love that. If I lived in a mansion and like huge grounds. He'd love to just go running. 
it'd be exploring everything and be happy all day long he'd be happy not that he's miserable but he'd just he'd be knackered he'd come in and just clap on, claps on the floor and just go to sleep because he'd just have so much fun I imagine I'll let you know when it happens <laughs> when I <laughs> when I inherit when I inherit the mansion and the mansion grounds and uh then I have to change my name to a double barreled name and I have to get myself a what is that the coat of arms or something yeah oh that'd be good always quite like the idea not always well maybe always having one of those mentions you know they have the I like both, you know, you have the stairs, huge stairs going up in the middle or the ones where you've got the stairs going either side, like on the right and left side, going up and then meeting, you know, it's uh, like in the movies basically, or Downton Abbey, I is, does Downton Abbey have that? Might do. I've not really watched Downton Abbey, I watched it on the first, the first ever episode I watched. And I was around my dad's, and it was Christmas period. And they were waiting for me to leave. And so I'm sitting there watching Downton Abbey, and it was, I think, um, one of the characters was uh, accused of stealing some cutlery or something like that, if I remember. And I never, I never really watched it again after that. Yeah. So what did, what was it? Yeah, animal. So I've always had a thing about penguins. Not always, but for the last 20 years I've had a, not a, maybe longer than that. Because I'm sure I used to have a penguin, little penguin thing that I used to wind up and it could swim in the bathtub. Little penguin. I definitely had an, a dolphin. I think I had a penguin as well. And that's what I need to do. I need to get some of that stuff again. Just to have some fun. I mean, it's not just for kids, is it? I mean, yellow ducks for the bath. And I used to take my soldiers and my toys into the bath with me. I did. The amount of laptops I ruined. No, I used to, I used to, there was no laptops back then. And a laptop literally was the top of your lap. You know, the, your legs, that was it. That's what a laptop was back then. Computers did exist, though. They did. Computers were around. Um, my dad, because he was elect an electrician, he was really into technology. Here's something you might not know about my dad. There was a time when do, 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 early 80s well everything kind of happened in the early 80s because yeah it was like from 77 to 86 85 you know so anything that really happened that I remember would be probably between 81 and 84 so anyway, my dad, not everything that happened in the world, but my dad had this, I don't know if it was a business or a contract or something, with, and he did this thing with his friend, and they had these caravans, but you know the ones you drive yourself, not the ones that you pull, but the ones you drive. And he was really into creating all this technology inside the caravans. And it was like really high tech. And I don't know what happened to all that stuff. I don't know. I really don't know. But I remember me taking me down to there to have a look. And I don't know if it was a business. Or I don't know if it was just did it for fun. I really don't know. But he... Yeah, he really really good 
and I'd go down and have a look and he'd show me all the new gadgets and stuff inside this caravan that you could drive and yeah it was proper proper good that's it that was the whole story <laughs> that was it if you could be any animal oh man I quite like the idea of being a monkey because again I just monkeys are so funny to watch they're just so funny and but then a wolverine yeah a wolverine see a wolverine is technically they are the toughest animal in the world as far as um they're not they, they can't they can't beat every other animal because they're not big enough but they on a, as far as land animals go nothing will mess with a wolverine because they are just savages absolutely and uh, andre was actually like ferrets and badgers and all of those kinds of animals they're all related to wolverines and they've all kind of got that side to them where they don't back down fearless absolutely fearless so what is it uh maybe a wolverine maybe a ferret i reckon I kind of like to know what it's like to be a ferret. I'd like to see through Andre's eyes, you know, the eyes of looking through what he saw. But then I'd quite like to be able to see, I'd like to know what Vinny's thinking. I don't know if I would like to, I don't know if I'd enjoy knowing what he's thinking. But there's a little bit of me thinking, oh, what's he thinking? <laughs> what's he, he thinking something, isn't he? What is it? I just don't know. I can't... I can't figure it out. I can't figure him out. Right now, he's just enjoying his bone. I don't know if you can hear him in the background, but he's just... It's, it's like full of meat, and he's trying to get into it. So they compact this bone thing with meat. Or chicken. He's loving it right now. And I, I, li I like seeing him like this. I just like seeing him. He's happy. It's really happy. This is... Yeah, this is a happy moment for him. He loves treats, but... The fact that it's also food is good. So maybe a penguin... bear I think I'd like to be an animal that I could that could look after myself so something like I don't know why but I just like the idea maybe if I'm gonna have to live in the wild I don't want to be an animal that's always on the lookout and always sort of running away and always having to hide so but bears the only predators bears have are humans, really. So, yeah, I know I'm probably going a little bit too factual, a little bit too sensible with this answer. Um, okay, an octopus. Is that what you want? I want to be an octopus. <laughs> I reckon be an octopus would be quite cool because they are. It's they. They're literally unexplainable. Well, I suppose they are explainable, but how? How? How does an octopus work? It doesn't make sense. Uh, I mean, I've not studied them, but... Really? How? How is that possible? An eagle. That's another or eagle. I'm absolutely fascinated with eagles at the moment. Or birds of prey. I used to be a little bit when I was younger. The reason for now is because there's two birds of prey 
that fly around. I haven't seen them for a week or so, actually. But there's been times when I've been in the park and I've looked up and they've been just gliding through the air on a blue, you know, blue sky and you can see them and sometimes it's just one and then occasionally the two of them come out together. And there's hardly any other bird, well, when they're in the sky, there's not a lot of, there's not many other birds in the sky at the same time. I guess there's a reason for that. The seagulls don't care and they're, they're way higher anyway. But these birds, they like hovering around and the wingspan is large. Uh, apparently, I spoke to a, a local, and she said that they they live in the in the field somewhere. So she sees them in the field, like you know the actual fields fields that are up the road, where the field stuff happens. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. There's lots of trees, so I guess they live in a tree. They don't live on the ground, do they? I don't think. We don't have any mountains around here. But they might live on top of a building. That's possible, isn't it? Because don't birds of prey, they sometimes live on top of really, really tall buildings. They, or am I thinking of Spider-Man? Uh, but they're so beautiful to watch. And I, I can't see them properly with my eyesight and I can't really because the park's near a school I'm not going to go there with binoculars just just because it's not a good look basically but I'd like to um, because I really uh, well more more than the binoculars I'd like to film them so I could look at the birds together well even or separately but actually not just see them with my own eyes but actually so I could re-watch it on my TV and stuff and just get a, a closer look at what they look like. Because I don't know, we don't generally have eagles in this country. I mean, I think there are, there are eagles in Scotland, I think. But usually, the, from my memory, birds of prey here are more likely to be peregrine falcons. Um... Hawks, I don't know. Not golden retrievers. Oh, there's a few different ones. Uh, I just remember peregrine falcon for some reason. Albert, not albatross. What's that word? What's that word? It was. I was in the when I went to school. They had a year. I was in R, and they had this word which spelled out the first letter of each. The first letter, the, 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 yeah, the letter of each. Was it albatross? Al. Yeah, sorry. The the word was spelled out with these different um, classes. So I was in class R. And the class of four, that was class P. The last, osprey, that's it. Osprey, that's a bird of prey, isn't it? So O-S-P-R-E-Y. So Y was the bottom class and O was the top class. I was in R, O-S-P-R-E-Y. So I guess I was in the, I would say joint middle, but lower middle, I guess. But I was in Y for maths and I think another subject so uh, I was never in O it's kind of weird because when I went to high school I was in R for everything and then as the year went past I think after the first term I went into Y for a couple of lessons so I joined I joined that group and some of the other kids that were in my are uh, in my year, the next year they went up to O for English and maybe for maths because they were actually they should have been in a higher group because uh, 
they were much cleverer than, well, I say cleverer, but they were more academic than the ones in the R. So they should have been at a higher, so it's it's weird, weird one. So maybe an eagle. But I'm not a big fan of heights. I guess I just have to fly really low. No, that wouldn't, no. Nah. But then you wouldn't know that. That's what you do, isn't it? I suppose if you're, if you're a penguin, eating raw fish is what you do, isn't it? I wouldn't want to eat raw fish now. And if I was a lion, I mean, I don't want to eat hyena, but I guess if I was a lion, that'd be super tasty. Very Moorish. I don't know. So, I don't know, really. I spent too long on this one, haven't I? I think probably... Do you know how... Do you remember... Oh, what was his, what was his name? He used to go through time. Not time bandits. And he'd go through time, and every time he'd go through it, he'd like wait, he'd come back, and he'd be in someone else's body, and he'd always go, oh boy. Quantum leap, that's it. If I could be like quantum leap, but in different animals, so just try out different ones. So, you know, maybe be in an eagle for a few days, and then be in a bear, a polar bear for a, a few days and then maybe uh, a penguin and then perhaps a butterfly for a few hours and just, you know, just to get a, an idea what it's like. And maybe after a while of doing that, I can choose one. Is that, that that's acceptable, I think. Um, yeah, so that's my answer to that question. It's not wasn't very good, was it? Sorry. Diana, what is your favourite way to unwind after a crappy day? Crappy as in being around lots of negative and emotional draining people. Emotionally draining people. Ah, okay. Well, I'll be honest. I, I, I don't like to be honest, as you know. Uh, I... So I, I oh I I do f sometimes feel very drained when I'm around anybody. Um, not not because of the people, just because maybe I, it it takes so much. Vinny, come on, mate. We're not doing that anymore. Otherwise, we've got this. Oh, now, now he's finished his bone, he's now focusing on the sounds in the garden. Right. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Now I'm waving his little thing around. Um, I should explain, expand on that, should I? The, the alarm thing that I press to calm him down. So he's, he's now jumping on top of me. Keep putting the phone out of the way so he doesn't stand on it, but he keeps trying to move towards the phone. Yeah, I think I put too much effort in sometimes. So when I'm around people, let's say it's a couple of people and I'm having a laugh and sometimes I'll come out of the conversation and I'll get home and I'll just feel drained. And it's not anything that they've done is that I've possibly put too much effort into it and I wasn't... It's not that I was being fake. Or maybe I, maybe I was being fake, but... I don't know. Because hmm. sometimes I don't know what mood I'm in until I actually speak to a human. I mean, generally, I don't know. Um, there's been times when I thought I was in a good mood and I've gone outside, seen someone and realised that in that moment, I'm not particularly fond of anybody. Just, just you know, mood-wise. Didn't even know it. Didn't even feel it. Because on my own, 
there was no, I guess there's no feedback. If I lived with somebody, like a human, I would very, I'm sure, very, very likely get constant feedback about how I am as a person, how I'm being. Because I had a, I had a friend phone me up the other day and I just, I had to say to her, Look, I can't, can't talk at the moment, I'm in a bad mood. And she was like, huh? Because I'm not normally like that, I'm usually friendly. I wasn't unfriendly, I was just letting her know that I couldn't have a conversation because I was really not in a good space. And it threw her off, it really did. But the reason I told her is because I knew. Because in the past, there's there's been times when I didn't know until someone's phoned up or until I've seen the person and the conversation hasn't gone particularly well and I've said the wrong thing or I've not been particularly... Not, not necessarily been horrible, but maybe been a bit snappy, a bit... Uh, I don't know what the right word is. So I, I generally am not not horrible, but not as friendly as normal. I mean, it happened uh, what a few weeks back. Someone, there's a little girl and her mum that says hello to Vinny, and I was walking through the park. Again, I I, I knew I was in a bad mood that day, and she said, "Oh, you're all right." I said, "No." She said, "Do you want to come down and talk?" I said, "Do you want to sit down and have a chat?" I said, "No." No thanks, I've got to get out of there. And I went home, because I knew that that's what I needed to do. So I guess it's just awareness, self-awareness maybe sometimes. But that's not really the question, is it? Um, to qu What do I do? Well, okay, I've got a few things. Because it's going to be strange, and I, I don't really, I don't know if I really talk about the bipolar or much, too much, but... I can, my mood can go like instantly. My mood can change in a, like straight away sometimes. Um, and sometimes I do get mixed states. So I've got the energy of uh, being, I guess, manic -y. Not like full, ma not a full mania, but a lot, a huge amount of energy, but at the same time, depression. So it's kind of a weird mixture. So that's I have to be careful in that in that in that moment to make sure that I uh, keep calm and you know stay at home really. So if if um, so it's not always necessarily people that that wind me up. I do get I have had a few human obviously human beings. We're not all. We can't all get on, can we, all the time? So I had a few a few moments. I've had loads of moments <laughs> so over the years. But I don't go out much these days. And the people I do see generally are nice. Uh, dog walkers, that, that's pretty much all the people I see. I haven't really got... My friend downstairs is not there anymore. So I don't have the regular contact I had before. But I'm I'm okay with that actually. I've I've got a few friends on the phone. Uh, I had a phone a uh, phone call last night from a friend who I've known for blimey seventeen years, eighteen years, and she called me up and I said I'm about to go to sleep, go away, and she said no, <laughs> and we ended up talking for an hour and a half or an hour and eighteen minutes, and. Um, it was really good for me, to be honest. I was about to go to bed, but it was good good to have a chat with her because, you know, we've got history. We've known each other for a long time. I know her boyfriend. I know her mum. And, it's, you know, so I know her very well. So it's, it's quite nice to probably catch up, but I prefer to have done it during the day because I was so tired at the end of it that's another thing I find that being around people drains me 
sometimes, not always, but sometimes I just feel drained. And just being around people, even if it's sitting on a bus or walking down a busy street, stuff like that, I just, maybe it's a, it's a mixture of the noise, the, the various emotions that are going on, the energy, you know, and it just, I don't, I don't find it invigorates me. It doesn't give me energy, necessarily. I mean, sometimes it does as well. So it depends, depends. Uh, when I used to go to comedy clubs, I used to get energy from that. I used to love it. S you know, sitting at the bar or standing at the bar, watching a comedian on stage, the audience laughing, that gave me a buzz. You know, even if I wasn't performing, um, it just it was just a lot of fun. Always, always enjoyed it, pretty much. And uh, you know, I've seen thousands of shows, thousands of performances over the years. And I'm not saying I liked every single performance, but there was usually quite a positive aspect to all of them kind of well not always but you know generally and so really wait I've gone on a, I've gone in a different direction for the first time ever you know normally I stick to the subject and I yeah what do I do okay there's a couple of things that I do to combat the first thing I have to I have to be on my own so I have to be on my own no conversations, no phone, no texting, no talking. Sometimes all I can do is go to bed. You know, I can't even watch TV, can't listen to music, can't read, can't do anything. It's not I can't do that stuff, but I can't. My, my brain's not functioning to do that. It's like I'm... Um, depleted uh, somehow so then I go I, about what I do is I lay down and I just lay there I might have music I mean these days I'll probably have music playing because of Vinny but in the past I, I probably wouldn't have done because the background sounds don't really bother me even if it's people in the garden unless they're like really really loud uh, generally I don't care but Vinny reacts to that so I have to have music playing or an audio book or stuff like that. Or listen to the radio sometimes as well. But generally, just laying down. And it's not about going to sleep, but it's definitely closing my eyes and letting that go. Letting whatever, whatever it is, just let it go. And recuperate. I mean, it feels a little bit like how I'm not comparing myself to Superman, by the way, but it's um, although I am very similar, as I'm sure you agree. I, you know, when Superman gets exhausted and he he flies up and gets closer to the sun because the sun regenerates him. I'm a little bit like that, but instead of the sun, I lay in bed. And I remember years ago when I was at college doing the, it's a different college course, back in 2000 and, 2002, 2003, 2003, I did a holistic therapy course and it was getting, it was too much for me too much to do that and to work and to all the stuff that went with it it was too much and it was just getting to me more and more and more and I was around people a busy college lots of young people and then there's a people in my course that it was just you know, all the coursework it was it was difficult to balance it all and I remember I walked out at lunchtime 
They were all meeting up for lunch and I just walked away and kept walking. And I went through this alleyway and there was a park. Didn't even know there was a park there. I was just walking. And it was a sunny day, although it was kind of October time, but it was a really nice day. And I lay down on the grass and the sun was shining on me. And very much like Superman, I was, and I just laid there. And this is like 21 years ago, blimey. I couldn't, I couldn't, just couldn't take it no more. I just had enough. And I had to do, I had to let, I had to just let that stuff go. So I just laid there and the sun was shining on me. And it was the first time in a long, 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 long time that I felt relaxed. First time in possibly years, actually, that I felt that relaxed. It's almost like the earth was just sucking, not sucking me off, so it's take, sucking out the, the stress from my body and the tension and just my, all my muscles were just relaxing and my body was heavy, but it was almost, it's kind of doing it now, it's weird, isn't it? It was really nice. And my brain was starting to clear. Now, at the time, I'd already, I was still dealing with extreme anxiety at this time. So I was dealing with that as well. So all together, I kind of, I don't mean all, to, let's all say it together. I mean, with all that together, all added up. I just, I just walked away. As Craig David used to sing, I'm walking away from my life. I'm walking away. Hey, hey, hey. Gonna find a better day. So yeah, I just walked. I didn't go back. And I left the course, left the job. And took a year off I didn't take a year off I got I got a part time job in uh, a gift shop with the Buddhist uh, the Buddhist centre had a gift shop so I worked there part time throughout from November 2003 until September 2004 and then I had to get a job again so but that was needed. So I had about oh, two or three weeks where I didn't do anything until I started working part time. So yeah, that just closing my eyes, laying down. I mean, sometimes watching a movie can be good to relax. I think sitting down, I like to meditate as well. So it was all maybe just sitting down, listening to music, probably like classical music is what I'm more into these days. I like listening to other music, but when I'm actually, you know, if, so if I'm going to listen to Tracy Chapman or Stevie Wonder or Michael Jackson, that'll be while I'm doing something on the internet. That's why I'll be building a website or, uh, building videos for YouTube or stuff like that. But if I'm sort of lying down to relax or sitting down to relax, I generally will listen to classical music. So that's pretty much how I relax. If it if it's if it's like really not just needed, but imperative is it imperative in like I need to do it I need to relax I've got no choice but to, to relax then I would probably lie down 
Oh, my phone is on low power, so I've, I said do this next one. So that was for Dom from Diana. Thank you. Hope you that was all right. I, I suppose what I'd say, being around negative people and emotionally draining people. Now I can see both sides of that because I've been both. I have been that negative person and that emotionally draining person when I've been going through a depression in the past. And I know that, I've been told by people. And I know that I'm hard, hard work to be around, which is why I make sure that I'm not around people when I'm like that, if I can help it. But also being around people the going through that is just difficult, you know. But then there's there's some people th that I've met that it's like everything seems to be negative. It's like, come on, not everything's negative. And it's not like they're, they're not being negative because they're having a bad day or, you know, it's like every time I see them, they say something negative and unless it's funny, I generally try to keep away from them. I think we can, neg some negativity can be really funny. I know someone that's quite negative, but he's, he is funny with it, so it kind of works out all right. Um, Christine asks, what is a tattoo on your arm? When did you get it done? And why did you pick that design? Have you got any more? Never you mind have I got any more. Okay, my left buttock. Um, so what happened? <laughs> well, what happened is this. My eldest brother, so, so I knew some of the friends that my brothers had, whether it's just met them, you know, they, they came around the house or I, I just got, you know, you do, you get to know your brothers or your sister's friends over the years. And I forget his name, but one of my brother's friends was on a bus when me and my friend got on the bus and we were going to the next town. And we were just going to just hang out, hang out really. We didn't have any plans. Um, I possibly wanted to go and get a, a Kung Fu magazine or something. But other than that, there wasn't much going. In fact, probably not even that because at that time... I was 16 and I wasn't really doing the martial arts at the time because I was probably, work yeah, I was working in a chip shop. So I didn't have enough money to do anything. But we went into, t we got into town. It was like really cheap to get to town. Well, I must have had some money. Maybe this was at the beginning of when I worked in a chip shop because I was getting sixty pound a week when I first started working there until I till we got to September and I was on the YTS and it was twenty seven pound a week. But to start with, I was raking the money because I had no rent to pay and I got sixty pound a week. It was like loads of money. I was fifteen, which makes me think that maybe I was fifteen when I got the tattoo. Oh. Anyway, I was either 15 or 16. I think I maybe I was 15. And anyway, so we get we get on the bus, me and my friend. Neil, his, his name was. But I, don't, I can't remember the name of the friend, my brother's friend. And it was my eldest brother's friend. So he was four years older than us. So I don't know if my friend knew him, but I knew him to say hello to. And we're just chatting. I might have worked with him, actually, at, at the uh, bakery that I worked at. I feel we might have worked together, so that might be how I knew him. Anyway, we said, oh, are you all right? He said, yeah, you're all right. I said, yeah, you're all right? He said, yeah. Do you know Neil? He said, um, I don't know what he said. You know, this is weird. i got a neighbour, right? And this... My neighbour downstairs, this is like a relative of his. 
anyway, so he, this this lad, he was quite young then, he came round and he'd been accused of something, really serious crime that he hadn't committed and he needed to talk to me about it. He wanted to talk to me about it. So we're outside. So I, I said, let's go for a walk. We go into the park. I said, so we can just walk and talk and he can tell me how he's feeling, you know, things like that. Well, my other neighbour came came outside and he's walking, and um, I said, "All right, then, just just." And I'm trying to like get away from him because I'm trying to have a serious, very serious conversation, right? And I'm sort of like, so I I, I said hello to the neighbour, but that was it. The next day, he had a go at me. He said, "What? Well, why were you? Why didn't you introduce me to your friend? What's that all about? Were you like, what the hell are you talking about? Why have I got to introduce you to someone that what? This wasn't an introduction situation. I mean, he was absolutely distraught about the the. I know it's getting confusion. My friend's friend, and then a neighbour, neighbour of a friend, and a friend of a neighbour." And then a neighbour came out and a friend of the neighbour was talking. I tried to keep the friend of the neighbour away from the friend of the neighbour. I know it could be confusing. <laughs> but anyway, so on, on the bus, I'm not sure if they introduced each other or if they already knew each other. And we he said, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he said, Nothing. He said, well, well, don't don't touch my knee. That never happened. I don't know why I'm saying that. So he said, I said, what were you up to? He said, nothing much, just going into town. You know, just check out the birds. Because <laughs> there was a pet shop that we used to go to, an Avery, it was nice. And she, he said, I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, well, I might not have asked him because I've, Never been that interested in other people. <laughs> it, it might surprise you, but you know that that part of communication when someone asks you a question, "How are you?" or "What you've been up to?" and then it's expected for you to then ask them. That second bit is a bit that I sometimes forget, not because. It's just because I'm genuinely not interested. Um, not in a bad way, but i just not really that interested in what other people are doing. It's, I just like to talk about myself. <laughs> At least I'm honest. Uh, which is what I do, I do it here. I talk about myself. Miss out the middleman. That's what I say. Um, so, yeah, I don't remember... I mean, there's been times where I've been talking to someone. It's a long time ago, the last time this really happened, because I've managed to put on some kind of... Um, I, man I managed to have conversations with people these days. But there was a time when I would just freeze and I'd stop talking and I wouldn't know what to do next and I'd just look at the person and it'd be an awkward silence. And then they would like turn away, like see ya, bye, and go, because I wouldn't know what to say. You know, I really struggled to keep conversations going, and partly, I guess part part of the reason for that was because I genuinely wasn't interested in them, in them. <laughs> It just not it's not a it's not a bad thing. Um because if okay, I try and explain it. If I ask someone, How are you? Hey how, how you how you getting on? Or if I ask someone um about a job they had or about something, if I ask somebody a question, I genuinely genuinely, not generally, but genuinely I'm interested in the answer. 
I don't do small talk. Really. I do do small talk with dog walkers. You know, and it's like talk about the dogs, really, or about the weather and all that. But I also have sometimes interesting conversations as well. But I'm not really uh, talking, f uh, I don't know. And I think small talk, I think it's a bit, it's not, I don't quite like that term, small talk. It's almost put it like putting someone down, like well you're just you're just doing small talk. Like my my talk's so much more bigger than your talk. But I've got a bigger talk than you have. <laughs> and everyone's talk is equal, isn't it? It's it's not no one's talk's better than another person's talk. But if if I ask someone something, you know, generally genuinely I'm interested. Which means I don't ask people stuff very often. Because most of the time I'm not interested. And in some ways that's possibly a bad thing. But in other ways I think, well, at least I'm being honest. So if I ask someone something, I'm not just, I'm not trying to get anything out of them. I'm not trying to butter them up. I'm not trying to manipulate them. I'm not trying to pretend to be interested in them for some ulterior purposes is because I'm genuinely interested and that doesn't happen very often it's weird psychopath psychopath psy 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 psychopath or oh, it was the other one that he wants you're narcissistic that's all you are you're a narcissist I don't like really to think of it like that. I don't, not really. It's, look, either you're interested or you're not. You know, it's, I'm not that bothered. Generally. I'd rather talk about me. You know, I'd, I, I, I noticed, you know, years and years ago that I'd be listening to someone talk, just waiting for them to stop so I could tell them what I had to say. And in the process, I really wasn't listening to what they were saying. And I realised that that wasn't, wasn't really a conversation. Really, was it? If, 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 if I'm not listening to the other person, and all I want to do is just talk about me, then... That other person is not even needed for the conversation, I mean. You don't need two people for a monologue. And I'm not always into monologues. I obviously do do monologues. This is, I guess, a monologue. But, you know, I like the feedback. I like to, you know, sort of the questions, answer a question and stuff. But when it's... I can have conversations. I mean, it does. I'm quite good at conversations at times, but I have to be interested. And if I'm not in the mood, then the conversation's going nowhere. So, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I never know. It's very hard for me, personally, to plan stuff because I don't know from one day to the next... I don't know if from one hour to the next sometimes how I'm going to be feeling or how I'm going to, what kind of reaction I will have. It's very, very weird. It's a strange old world. What was the question again? <laughs> Christine, uh, what is a tattoo on your arm? That's it. It's about a tattoo. So I... It's really it's, it's we, my f my f my brother's friend. He said I'm gonna go go and get a tattoo. Now Neil, my friend, got very excited at that idea. I was a little bit scared, if I'm honest, because I could see his excitement, and his excitement was quite. The thing about Neil was. 
he liked to live life and he had a lot of energy and I think you know with some people when they've got the energy it's quite quite contagious so he was he he wanted to live you know he wanted to do stuff and I suppose I got a little bit contaged because all I did I went along because my friend Neil decided to have a tattoo there and then I'm going to get a tattoo and because he's Scottish he had a tattoo of Scotland I don't know if it was a Scottish flag or just a thing with Scotland on it on his shoulder I think he went septic but I might have made that bit up I know he had cling film on it which I found quite funny and that's the one thing if you ever have a tattoo especially when you're young I don't know if it's the same now, but the amount of people that asked me if it was a transfer. Yeah, it's a transfer. And I've added some blood just to make it look real. Yeah, it's it's tomato ketchup. Blimey. So, um, we went along to this little tattooist shop. It wasn't a big tattoo shop. The bloke that was doing the tattoos wasn't little. And... I'm not even sure if my friend's brother, my brother's friend rather, had a tattoo that day. I've got this vague memory of him running out screaming, no, 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 it might hurt, and ran away. But that might not have happened. But Neil was up for it, and he was definitely going to get a tattoo. He knew exactly what he wanted. It's almost like he'd planned it. And... I thought to myself, okay, I'm, I might as well get one as well. But I don't want it on my shoulder. I just have it on my arm. Because I can't see it on my shoulder, can I? At least if so, I can look at it if it's on my arm. And because I was still, that period of my life had been very much all to do with, like, the Orient, you know, China, um, Japan, Kung Fu, Karate ninjas, samurais, that's all the stuff that I was interested in. And I decided to get, it basically is a Chinese dragon head that they use in the big processions. You know, when you see, I don't know, the New Year or whatever in Chinatown or in China, I guess. I guess the whole of China is Chinatown, isn't it? Do they have English towns over there? It could be that the whole area is just English people. And they just have fish and chips, pie and chips and stuff like that. Shops like that and they just sit around moaning <laughs> about the weather. I just, yeah, so I had this and it's it's basically a lion's head. But possession, you know, one of those big things. that It takes like two or three people to manoeuvre it around. And then you have the big long tail and the body and everything. It's one of them. But it's very, very dull now. Because it's been on there for a long time. Well, it's, let's say 16, 26, 36, 46. 26, 16, 26, 36, 46. So 30, nearly 38 years, man. Wow. So yeah, I I remember when I was younger, I used to get quite often people would look at it and say, what's that? What's that on your arm? I said, it's my tattoo. She said, no, no, the other thing. Oh, it's a boil. And she was a boil. She said, oh, it's lovely. Can I pop it? No, leave me alone. Look at the tattoo. No, but the boil was more attractive. Like, okay, that's a bit rude. That's a nice tattoo. She said, what is it? But I went through a phase where I used to say, so what's, what's that tattoo of? I said, it's my mum. <laughs> they'd, they'd either laugh or they'd walk away. Um, I'm walking away. Yeah. Or if I wanted to be extra rude, I'd say it was their mum. But that didn't always go down so well. you got to read the crowd. You know, you got to read the audience sometimes. Which is something that I've never done. I'm a, a winger. I wing it and hope for the best. 
So that, Christine and Diana and Tino and everyone else that's listening. So thank you for the questions. Have I got any other? Oh, have I got any other tattoos? No. Um. There is part of me. There is a. There is a part of me who would quite like to get a tattoo. Like my friend had, but he had his on his face, and it was just below his eye, like on his cheekbone. And. I don't know, this part of me would like to get one like that just as a, I guess as a tribute to him, but I don't think it would probably be a good idea. Maybe. I don't know if it, I don't think it would really suit me and I, I just don't know. It suited him, but he, he had loads of tattoos, like he was a tattooist. He had all the tattoo equipment and everything and... I remember one of the neighbours said, I can't believe it. He's dead. He He's dead now. And he didn't finish my tattoo. I've got half a tattoo done. And he hasn't finished it. I'm like, that's not really the worst part of the story, is it? <laughs> he should have stayed alive long enough to finish my tattoo. Blimey. I mean, there's, there's thousands of tattooists around. Just go to a different tattooist. It's not that complicated. Uh, so that's it. Oh, I gotta go. This has been really relaxing. Oh no, Vinny, are you there? Are you on the floor? No, you're not. He moves around so quietly sometimes. I don't know where he is. So I'm gonna go. So thank you for listening. Yeah, that's all the questions answered. Thank you for listening. Please remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love.